Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Whether you're looking for medical insights, the latest healthcare trends, or fun educational content, there's something here for you. This video provides a quick summary of our detailed blog article, JAK2, CALAR, and MPL Mutations, Advanced Treatment Strategies That Work. The discovery of somatic mutations in JAK2, CALAR, and MPL has fundamentally reshaped the landscape of myeloproliferative neoplasms, or MPNs. These mutations, drivers of abnormal hematopoietic proliferation, are now essential diagnostic markers and therapeutic targets. JAK2V67F is the most prevalent mutation, seen in nearly all polycythemia vera cases and 50 to 60% of patients with essential thrombocythemia and primary myelofibrosis. CALAR exon 9 mutations appear in 20 to 25% of essential thrombocythemia and 30 to 40% of primary myelofibrosis. MPL mutations are less common, ranging from 3 to 7%, but are significant, especially at codon W5115. Over 90% of MPNs harbor one of these driver mutations, enhancing molecular diagnostics and risk stratification. However, therapeutic responses, especially to JAK inhibitors, remain imperfect. Half of patients lose response within five years. This review explores current and emerging treatment strategies targeting these mutations. JAK2V67F and Exxon 12 variants. The JAK2V67F mutation results in persistent JAK-STAT pathway activation, driving cytokine-independent cell growth. In polycythemia vera, it leads to panmyelosis, in essential thrombocythemia and primary myelofibrosis, elevated platelets and marrowfibrosis. Less commonly, exon 12 mutations drive erythrocytosis in JAK2-negative polycythemia vera, often in younger patients. CALAR and MPL mutations. CALAR mutations, primarily type 1, 52 base pair deletion, and type 2, 5 base pair insertion, alter the C-terminal structure, enabling aberrant activation of MPL and downstream JAK-STAT signaling. MPL mutations similarly result in continuous signaling that occurs independently of thrombopoietin. Notably, CLR and MPL mutations are mutually exclusive with JAK2 mutations, but converge on similar signaling pathways. triple negative MPNs and non-canonical drivers. A subset of patients, 10% of essential thrombocythemia and 5 to 10% of primary myelofibrosis, lack detectable driver mutations. These triple negative MPNs often have non-canonical variants or mutations in regulators like TT2, ASXL1, and SRSF2. Next generation sequencing, or NGS, is essential for uncovering clonality and guiding treatment in these cases. Mutation testing in diagnosis and classification. The 2016 WHO classification mandates mutation testing as a core diagnostic criterion. Polycythemia vera diagnosis requires jak 2 mef or exon 12 mutation. Essential thrombocythemia and primary myelofibrosis diagnoses rely on the detection of jak 2 calar or MPL mutations. NGS allows identification of high-risk mutations such as ASXL1, EZH2, and IDH1-tau, informing prognosis and influencing treatment, particularly hematopoietic cell transplantation decisions. Variant allele frequency of JAK2V67F reflects disease burden. Variant allele frequency or VAF greater than 50% correlates with higher thrombotic risk. Rising VAFs signal disease progression. Declining VAFs during therapy may indicate treatment efficacy. Targeted therapies in JAK2-positive MPN include JAK inhibitors. Ruxolitinib, the first approved JAK1 inhibitor, is effective in reducing spleen size by 41.9% and improving survival by 71% at three and a half years. Fedratinib is approved for ruxolitinib intolerant or resistant patients with a spleen response in approximately 36%. Mamelotinib is particularly helpful for anemia due to ACVR1 inhibition. Pacritinib is favorable for thrombocytopenic patients. Despite their efficacy, JAK inhibitors typically don't reduce mutant clone burden substantially. Resistance often develops via alternative signaling activation. Interferon alpha, specifically long-acting roped interferon alpha 2b, significantly reduces JAK2V67F allele burden. Unlike hydroxyurea, interferon alpha targets mutant stem cells directly 
and can induce sustained molecular remissions. Lifestyle modifications play a crucial role. Smoking cessation significantly lowers MPN risk with a hazard ratio of 2.5 for smokers. Chronic inflammation from smoking may favor mutant clone expansion. Addressing comorbidities and maintaining a healthy body weight also contribute to improved outcomes. For Calar and MPL-specific therapies, Calar-mutated MPNs respond well to interferon alpha, reducing Calar allele burden and inducing molecular responses. However, additional mutations such as TET2 and AXL1 predict poorer response. Monoclonal antibodies targeting mutant Calar show promise in preclinical studies. Peptide vaccines targeting mutant Calar epitopes are in early clinical trials. MPL-mutated myeloproliferative neoplasms, or MPNs, involve mutations that activate wild-type JAK2. This activation limits the selectivity of JAK inhibitors. Research is currently exploring direct MPL inhibition or even immunotherapies. When it comes to clinical trial design and monitoring, the European Leukemia Net, or ELN, and the International Working Group for Myeloproliferative Neoplasms Research and Treatment, or IBGMRT, have guidelines that help standardize MPN trial phases. These trials are increasingly incorporating molecular endpoints, such as variant allele frequency reduction. Advanced techniques like digital droplet PCR and next-generation sequencing allow for sensitive mutation monitoring. Resistance and mutation order are critical factors. Resistance to JAK inhibitors often involves the reactivation of MAPK signaling. Combination therapies that target both JAK2 and AXL or MEK have shown potential in overcoming this resistance. The order of mutations also influences the phenotype and treatment response. For instance, JAK2 first mutations lead to increased thrombosis and greater sensitivity to ruxolitinib compared to TET2 first mutations. Conclusion Toward Precision Medicine in MPN Management Advances in molecular understanding of JAK2, CALAR, and MPL mutations have fundamentally transformed the diagnosis and treatment of myeloproliferative neoplasms. The integration of mutation testing now serves as the cornerstone of MPN classification, with driver mutations detectable in 98% of polycythemia vera patients and 85-90% to of essential thrombocythemia and primary myelofibrosis patients. Consequently, therapeutic approaches have evolved from symptom management to targeted interventions addressing specific molecular aberrations. JAK inhibitors remain the mainstay of treatment for myelofibrosis, with ruxolitinib demonstrating not only symptom relief, but also survival benefits compared to conventional therapies. Nevertheless, these agents face substantial challenges through resistance mechanisms, particularly MAPK pathway reactivation. The emergence of combination strategies targeting both JAK-STAT and alternative pathways accordingly offers promising approaches to overcome these limitations. For Calar mutated MPNs, interferon alpha therapy has shown remarkable efficacy in reducing mutant allele burden though additional mutations may compromise treatment response. Furthermore, novel monoclonal antibodies specifically targeting mutant Calar present exciting possibilities for selective elimination of pathological clones while preserving normal hematopoiesis. The sequence of mutation acquisition, rather than merely their presence, proves critically important for treatment outcomes and disease presentation. JAK2 first patients demonstrate enhanced sensitivity to JAK inhibition compared to patients who acquired TET, two mutations before JAK2. This finding underscores the need for comprehensive genetic profiling beyond simple mutation detection. Future directions will undoubtedly focus on refining mutation-specific targeting strategies and developing combination approaches that address resistance mechanisms. Though complete eradication of the malignant clone remains challenging, Current evidence suggests that personalized treatment selection based on specific driver mutations and their co-occurring alterations offers the best hope for improved outcomes. Thanks for watching our global RPH production. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. 
We're bringing you a dynamic mix of content across a variety of topics, so there's always something fresh, engaging, and insightful just for you. Your support means the world to us. It helps us grow and keep delivering exciting, high-value content. Stay tuned, because the best is yet to come.